So if you watch Jared work from BioS3 Raw TV, you know that you know that he's a sellout. <laughs> Buy everything that you hear. Me. <laughs> we are friends, despite the fact that everyone thinks we have beef. Boss Lawyer's doing it for Fetch Your Macros now. Announced yeah. it, everybody. Switched over. Hey, YouTube. Thank you guys so much for the warm welcome you gave me on my first video back after a year and a half off of YouTube. That last video blew my mind. I read all of your comments. I did not expect that awesome of a warm welcome. The amount of positivity and excitement you guys showed in the comments was incredible. I just wanted to take a second to say thank you. I appreciate that. I did read every single comment. Blew me away. So thank you so, so much for that. That was incredible. I wanted to take a minute to speak on two friends of mine that passed away this year, 2022. They were friends of mine that you all probably know of and followed and even looked up to. Boston Lloyd passed away at 29 years old this February 2022, and Jerry Ward passed away at 46 years old just this past July 2022. Both of these hit me, and I won't, I won't try to lie or exaggerate. You know, when someone passes away, everybody comes out of the woodwork and claims they were best friends with them, best friends. I didn't see them every single day. I didn't talk to them every single day, but I did have a strong relationship with them. I do have a lot of memories, a lot of videos with them, a lot of experiences with them, and they were two people I actually held very dear in my heart on a personal level. So I said a few words about them when they each passed away this year on social media. Of course, I wasn't on YouTube at that time. Now that I've returned to YouTube, I wanted to take a minute to just remember both of them. Go down memory lane, recap how I met them, my experiences with them, and just say a few words to honor their memory. So in no particular order, the, the most recent passing we had was Jerry Ward, who passed away 46 years old, like I said, of a pulmonary embolism. And uh, his partner Aaron actually just posted a video on his Instagram confirming all of this. Pulmonary embolism, and it was caused by deep vein thrombosis. It sounds like it was entirely random, a freak, unfortunate thing that happened. Uh, he was in great health. He wasn't feeling any nasty symptoms. In fact, the only symptom he reported was a slight little pain around his rib area, um, which he didn't think much of. And then he went to bed, and then the following morning, the people he was supposed to meet up with hadn't heard from him, they checked on him, and that's when they found him, sadly passed away in his sleep. So I want to take a minute to remember Jerry. Jerry and I first got connected in 2013. So him and I have been friends for about as long as Ariana and I have been dating. So about nine years now. Uh, and it actually started in kind of a funny way. So OG viewers will remember back in 2013, I made kind of a controversial video. It shouldn't have been controversial in my opinion, but it ended up being a video telling other fellow YouTubers or aspiring new channels to be careful on the sponsorships they take. And I was singling out a particular supplement company that was sponsoring a lot of YouTubers at the time. And I put out there how I felt the deal just really wasn't in the best interest of the YouTubers. And this of course sparked a lot of response. Some people loved it, some people hated it, some people took it as personal insults. Jerry happened to be with this supplement company. He was sponsored by them. I had been a fan of Jerry's channel for a little while now leading up to this, and I did not have Jerry in mind when I made this video. I had no people in mind. Of course, this video was made nine years ago. It's all water under the bridge now anyway. I was just trying to help YouTubers at the time. But you know how the internet goes. I remember watching one of Jerry's videos, and in the comments, a bunch of people were trying to rally him up against me. Did you see Nick Wright's video talking trash about you? Normally, I ignore all that stuff, but Jerry I happened to like, and I did not want someone thinking that I was purposely disrespecting them or calling them out when I wasn't purposely disrespecting them or calling them out. So I actually messaged Jerry on Facebook right there and then and cleared the air. Hey, Jerry, been a fan of your channel. Uh, you might have seen in the comments, people are mentioning this video I made. It was just about YouTubers in general trying to help them. I wasn't targeting you, etc. I explained the whole thing to him. He responded back. He totally understood it. And we got to chat and we kicked it off right away. And in fact, in that conversation, uh, he invited me to link up with him in December. Turns out Jerry is also a fellow native Rhode Islander, like myself. It's kind of a rare thing. Rhode Island's a small little state. And only a handful of people in the fitness industry are from it. You got me. Jerry, Amanda Bucci, 
Bob and Nick from Olympus Iron, Brandon Campbell, who actually I believe is from Virginia originally, lives in Rhode Island now. So that was a little exciting. So anyway, Jerry went on and addressed the topic in a video, made a video responding to me, and it was really cool. He cleared the air. And then come December, me, Olympus Iron, and Jerry all connected in Rhode Island, got our first training session in. And this is when Jerry was still a big boy, hardcore bodybuilding lifestyle. And it was a blast. And we kicked it off, man. From there, Jerry and I would link up every chance we got. Anytime he'd visit Rhode Island, we'd be sure to get a lifting, get some good video footage in. And we just had a blast. It was so natural. And this continued until the friendship got tighter and tighter between him, Ariana, and myself. Until he finally invited me and Ariana to his 40th birthday party, which was being celebrated with his family. So he invited us to come visit him, meet his parents. This is where I met Aaron for the first time. This was in, I believe, 2015. And uh, we had dinner for his 40th birthday. Jerry shared a lot of uh, common interests with Ariana and myself. He, he was so diverse with what he was into. Of course, he was into bodybuilding, as was I, so we had that. He was also very into designer. At the time, I was very into designer shoes specifically as was Ariana so I remember noticing like we had the same LV loafers on at the party and things like that it was just a lot of fun uh, he was huge into wrestling and he happened to be friends with a lot of mainstream wrestlers like he had a lot of really famous friends and he was so low-key and cool about it he would just he'd be with you at an expo and saying how oh after this lunch with you I'm gonna go meet up with insert any superstar you've seen on TV or in movies and you just say it like it was no big deal he was just friends with everybody you even see it now everyone comments on his page, uh, all, all these crazy names. That's just who Jerry was. He had this amazing, larger than life uh, personality that just drew people in. And he was such a warm, inviting person. So him inviting us to his to his birthday party to meet his whole family, uh, just continued to, to strengthen the friendship. We ended up doing the red carpet event together in Las Vegas. This was for Isatory when they did C.T. Fletcher's big movie premiere. There was a huge red carpet event. I had a professional cameraman following me around for the comeback series. A lot of you remember that. Jerry was on the Isatory team. So him and I did a lot of Isatory events together. We did a lot of seminars together. We did a lot of booths together. In fact, before this, Ariana and I would joke about how Jerry was like our trainer travel buddy or our expo buddy because even when we weren't doing booths together, we'd always run into him, uh, be it at airports or taking Ubers to and from locations, and we'd always just end up riding with him and chatting with him and just hanging out with him, making the way to the booth with him. He was a great friend. 2015, I think, was the red carpet event and Jerry shows up just decked out head to toe designer suit, designer shoes, uh, designer watch, and still just humble as ever though. He's complimenting my suit, which was no name, and just we had a blast. We got to walk into that event together. We got to leave that event together. In fact, some of my best memories are from that ride out of the big event. So we had the red carpet event. Uh, you know, we sat in the movie watching the, the premiere. I remember sitting right next to like Kai Green, Dana Lynn Bailey, Rob Bailey were there. We, we chatted with everybody in the industry. And afterwards we left, and I can't remember if it was a limo service or if it was uh, some sort of a cab company. I just remember it was a black SUV with a driver, and we left in that, Jerry, Ariana, and myself, and we got the driver to pull into In-N-Out for us. Us being Northeasterners, we didn't have In-N-Out, so that's really exciting. And it was just so many funny stories happened from that one car ride. Jerry was sober, if you didn't know. He was very open about this. He had dealt with addiction decades and decades back. He had been sober for a very long time. I believe we were sober as well because, well, A, we were with him, and B, we were coming from the event. There were there were no drinks being served at the event. Yet you would have thought we were all wasted if you just heard this car ride. And we got some of it on film. The jokes, the way we were laughing, trolling each other, it was the funnest memory I have with Jerry. We pull into the In-N-Out, and uh, Jerry, I can't remember half the jokes he was saying, but he was just lovingly trolling everybody, myself, the people in the in and out drive through and if you know Jerry, he never ripped on anyone. He never hurt feelings or, or took low blows. It was always the lighthearted jokes that would invite everyone to laugh about it. Um, but he had everybody, even the ladies at the drive through roaring. We have so many quotes that we constantly quote from Jerry. He was so generous too. Him and I and Ariana all went shopping on the Las Vegas Strip, I remember one time. This is actually where I got my Louis Vuitton loafers. I don't remember which year this was, but we went shopping around. We hit all the designer stores, just the three of us. We had a blast. But I remember he had this crazy shoe collection. He loved collection sho collecting shoes. And I, I mentioned a pair of Gucci shoes he showed on a video once that I said I love those. They were the type that Robert Downey Jr. wore 
at the 2003 red carpet, I don't remember if it was the Oscars or what, he wore it at some event, and they were pretty iconic shoes way back then at that time. And I remember commenting on those because Jerry had those shoes, and I was like, I love those. Jerry says to me, I only wore them twice. Do you want them? I'm like, yeah, you really want to give them to me? He didn't want anything for them. Next expo, he was at a different booth at this point. I went and found him at his booth. Pulls out his backpack, hands me this brand new pair of shoes, barely ever touched or warm. What an incredible gift. So he was just such a generous, loving, giving guy. And the last thing I wanna say about Jerry that really sticks out in my mind, that was so unique about him, and this is why I think so many people loved him and why so many people were drawn to him, is Jerry was just unapologetically himself. There's being real, and being real is a great thing. I think I'm fairly real, I think a lot of my friends are fairly real, I try to surround myself with genuine people, but even I. I will at times, you know, read the room. And if I feel it's a colder atmosphere or more professional atmosphere, I may kind of zip myself up a little bit, just compose myself a little bit more, you know? If it's a little more casual, I might let myself unwind, be a little bit more funny, crack a little more jokes. Jerry was just unapologetically himself no matter the room, and it was awesome. It didn't matter if he was walking into a room full of billionaire CEOs or rowdy bikers. He was exactly the same way in both rooms, and just the way he was, because he was a genuinely good person, everyone loved him for it. It drew people in. He never put on this persona. You never felt like he was trying to impress you or, or show you some side of him uh, or anything. You never felt judged around him. And I genuinely think that's why everyone from his viewers on YouTube all the way up to celebrities that he was friends with all loved him. Sadly, at the age of 46 years old, this past July, I believe it was July, I don't want to say the wrong date, it was July 2022, we lost him. And uh, that was a really good friend and a good human that we all had to lose. So rest in peace to Jerry Ward. I give nothing but love to Aaron and Jerry's parents. And um, man, I just wanted to take a minute to kind of uh, remember him like that. My other friend who I had to lose this year was Boston Lloyd. Same sort of person as far as being genuinely himself, unapologetically himself at all times. Now, Boston was known for stirring the pot. He was known for being uh, controversial at times, even infamous at times. He'd like to kind of poke the bear on certain topics in bodybuilding and call people out and really get the pot stirred. And of course, if you didn't know Boston, it's easy to take that a certain way. But for anybody who got to know Boston on a personal level, knows what it was. Boston was the type of dude where he might call somebody out on Facebook and it might seem very harsh, but if he ran into that same dude that same day, he would probably buy that dude lunch and chat with him and pick his brain. And on something that this did not agree on, uh, Boston would most likely have a a healthy dis discussion or a friendly debate about them with it. Boston never took things personally. Even if something sounded personal, it wasn't to Boston. Boston, again, just was himself at all times, no matter who was in the room. And I gotta say, he was one of the most non-judgmental, caring people if you knew him in person. I genuinely had a soft spot for Boston because of that. You could bring the most embarrassing, shameful thing that you wouldn't dare tell anybody to Boston and you would just feel liberated sharing with him. He would not judge you, he wouldn't look at you sideways, he wouldn't roast you about it. He might give you advice if you wanted advice, or he might just listen. It, it was a beautiful and rare thing. So I first got linked up with Boston in 2011 at Muscle Beach, Venice Beach. It was for an event I was doing with Big Bat Grips, an old sponsor from back in the day. And I travel out to Venice Beach a lot, Labor Day, Memorial Day, the 4th of July, and Boston would be there. We had both seen each other online in passing. We were both aware of each other loosely, but had never met. And I'll never forget it, the first time I meet him, he actually gives me a compliment. He said I had pretty good arms for a natty. <laughs> so, it's a big compliment come from Boston, if you know Boston and how critical he is with bodybuilding. That continued for the next couple of years, 2011, 2012, when I competed in my show there, and, and we kind of stayed in touch loosely. 2012, I see Boston uh, finally put up this video opening up about his gear use, and I loved it. And this was before Rich Piana. This was before More Plates, More Dates. He was the first one to really be honest about gear use. So I remember texting him, excited, and being like, dude, we should do like a documentary style video on this, blow this thing up. And he was all for it. Come 2013, we made it happen. And how that actually ended up happening was, he ended up dating Ariella Palumbo, who ended up marrying and actually has a kid with to this day. Ariella 
I knew from the Olympus Iron slash GNC circle. So Ariella, Nick from Olympus Iron, Bob from Olympus Iron, they all worked in GNC. I got a job in GNC back when I was 20 years old. Ariella actually trained me for one night at her store. I didn't normally work at her store. I went over to her store just for one night. She trained me there. I did horrible. I was brand new. <laughs> but that's where I first met her. I actually remember in 2013, I had just started dating Ariana. Uh, Ariella had just started dating Boston and we all met up a group of us not Boston not Ariana go figure both of them I think Boston was out of state Ariana was working that night but me Ariella Bob Nick probably a group of other people I think we all got food somewhere got dinner and I'm walking with Ariella back to her car because her and I happen to park way off in the distance and we just started chatting about our new relationships and how excited we were about them and I remember her specifically saying that Boston what she loved already off the bat was how he never got mad. He was so damn chill. And he never got judgmental. He never got possessive or jealous in the relationship. And right there, that was foreshadowing for how Boston is as a person. Just super chill, not jealous, doesn't think with his ego, and uh, it's just a genuinely chill, caring person. Come 2013, Boston visits Rhode Island. Him and Ariella are dating now, so he visits Rhode Island to visit her and her folks, maybe for the holidays, I can't remember when it was. And we decide to finally link up and do this video together. So I drive over to his place, Ariella's place, and we shoot our first video. I got the train with him, with Ariella, you see that? in the video and that video blew up man it was uh i think it was called steroids and bodybuilding it was very straightforward and it blew up people loved it and we made that routine from then on for the next couple of years every time he was in rhode island visiting he even moved to rhode island at one point for a little while to live with ariella in rhode island we'd link up and create these new videos either going over his cycle we did one video what what cycle he would put me on hypothetically if i wanted to go on just for the sake of thought experiment and and all these videos blew up some of them getting into the millions and millions of views all of them at least in the high hundreds of thousands of views so I had a lot of good times with Boston and Ariella both. Uh, I remember vividly there was a time where we linked up, him and I, we trained. He joined Ocean State Health and Fitness, my OG gym. And then I went back to him and Ariella's apartment. We got Chipotle, all three of us, brought it back and hung out at their apartment together. And I, I remember Boston was so damn cool. He would ask about me and my competing endeavors, even though I clearly did not fit the criteria of what he normally cared about in bodybuilding. I, you know, I wasn't enhanced. I wasn't an NPC competitor. Uh, physique wise, I was a joke as far as anything competitive went on his level, uh, but he still was just a genuine dude. He would just ask me about it, like a real conversation. So, and then, so of course him and Ariella moved to Florida and they started a family. Their son, Jackson, I believe is four and a half, super cute kid. And I, I didn't see him as much anymore after that. He stopped coming around expos. I slowed down and traveling to those as well. And you know, we both lived on in different states, but we still stayed in touch. And it was really funny. He'd hit me up for the most random things. A lot of it was like tech advice, specifically on video editing software or some Mac stuff. But that's funny because I'm like the last person you want to ask tech advice from. I'm horrible with tech. Uh, but then I pick his brain on different things too. And we just stayed in touch like that. And he always remained a really, really good dude. And the way he passed, I believe, Please correct me if I'm wrong. This is what I read. I believe it was aortic dissection, which is when basically the, the, the artery that transports the most amount of blood through your body from your heart uh, comes apart. It bursts. And uh, I believe that's what it caused it. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I, I was just going by what I've read. And people speculate on the medical side of things. It was known that Boston was in uh, deep kidney failure and that can have a direct effect on your heart. You know, whether that leads to, to the dissection, I have no idea. I'm not a medical professional. Honestly, I think if you're not a medical professional, it's really a waste of time trying to speculate on it. And personally, just me, just my opinion, I think it's a little disrespectful to Boston and to his family to try and speculate. Uh, people like to talk about the public PED use that he had and how he would experiment with PEDs and the effects that can have on health. Maybe that had an effect. Again, I'm not a medical professional. I don't think it's my place to speculate. At the end of the day, Boston was a husband. That was somebody's husband, that was somebody's kid, and that was somebody's father. Uh, so I don't, I don't wanna disrespect that by trying to speculate on things I really don't know anything about that I'm not educated to speak on. So, man, a big rest in peace to Boston and nothing but love to Ariella Jackson, Boston's family. 
Um, thank you guys for listening, going down memory lane with me. If you guys have any memories of Boston and Jerry yourself, even just as viewers, even if just something about their channels or their social media presence uh, first inspired you or caught your eye, or if you have any funny stories, please leave them in the comments below. I want to hear. Uh, it's important to remember them in this kind of a light and to remember their lives. They both had a major impact on so many people. So rest in peace, Jerry Ward. Rest in peace, Boston Lloyd. And uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in, for listening. If you've made it this far, if you've made it this far, comment in capital letters, hamburger. Just comment the word hamburger if you've made it this far. Um, people who have not made it this far are going to be very confused why you're commenting hamburger. And uh, that's, that's the only little bit of levity I want to throw into the end of this video. Um, because again, Boston and Jerry were both about jokes and uh, having fun with life. So thank you guys so much for watching and um, I'll see you in the next video.